This is a mountain breeze negative ion generator, or ionizer as they're known. Now, Mountain Breeze, I think Mountain Breeze was actually one of PIFCO's brands. Uh, it's, certainly it's made in Britain. And um, this one is probably in the region of 20 to 30 years old, but it's still going strong. And uh, I'm just going to pop the lid and show you inside it, because uh, once you see inside, you realise why they're so reliable. Um, now, these cases are glued together by PIFCO, but that's OK. We have the special tool for opening them, called a big screwdriver. Um, if you have one of these and you want to open it yourself, you have to give the case a good crack to actually at the sides to break the glue. I've had this one open before, I have to admit. In fact, I've done a repair in it, as you'll see shortly as well. Oh, blimey, yeah. Ugh. Glued together and lots of chunky bits. Yeah, I'm doing well here, aren't I? Oh, there we go. So, inside, the front panel falls off, and it reveals the circuit board that steps the voltage up and needles on the front. Now, the principle of operation of a negative ion generator is that it steps the mains voltage up through this voltage multiplier, and this is a Walton Cockroft voltage multiplier. Uh, this one has 22 capacitors and 22 diodes, which means it's 11 stages, because each stage consists of like two capacitors and two diodes. And the way this works is that it has a sort of like charge pump type effect. With the AC mains incoming, um, it sort of shuffles the voltage up from capacitor to capacitor via the diodes. Very simple circuit, and uh, it's super reliable, I mean, really reliable, because there's nothing really, there's no moving parts. It's not like the first ionizers that had transformers in them, and then a couple of uh, capacitor uh, diode stages just to boost up that little last wee bit. These ones uh, are all solid state, and as I say, they're, they're super reliable. This one had a slight design defect. Um, you can see a wee sort of sooty skid mark there, and that's because the most common fault I've found these things is that the neon indicator, with its little inline resistor, which operates directly off the mains, um, sometimes the resistor fails and then it goes pop and it takes a track out in the circuit board or it just blows up the, the neon's resistor. Very easy to fix. Uh, in this case, I, I obviously I stuck a couple of new resistors in here and heat shrink them. Oh, that's, that's very neat, I have to say, even though I did it myself. Um, so that, that's the only defect I found with these ones, and it's easily fixed. I mean, you could even just cut the neon off because it's not really needed. Um, the, so the voltage has been stepped up, and then it goes via these two resistors. They're safety resistors. They're two at 10 mega ohms. And the reason for that is the ionization current is super low. It really is very, very low. It must be like microamps or even nanoamps. And what happens to these is, is if, if you were to touch the needle, that's basically between you and the mains, those resistors. And though the voltage is several thousand volts, as soon as you get near, as your fingers approaches, because you're a fairly good reference to ground, the actual voltage will fall on the multiplier to an extremely low level, and it won't exceed the, the voltage rating of these resistors. It won't cause them to flash over in any way. So, needles. What have the needles got to do with it? Well, a negative ion generator, basically works by applying a high DC negative voltage with respect to ground to very sharp needle points. And when it does so, it, it can also, it doesn't have to be needle points, just as long as it's a sharp conductive material. Um, I've seen wire brushes used, although they're not as good as a sharp needle. And a very good emitter is carbon fibre. However, the carbon fibre tends to get dirty quite easy. So when it comes to the crunch, the simplest and most reliable is probably the the traditional stainless steel needle. So when you apply high voltage to the needle, the area of charge on a surface is greatest at a sharp point. This is why they don't have sharp points in Van de Graaff generators, otherwise they'd just be losing the charge into the air. It's always domes they have in those. But in this case, we want the air to get charged, and that's why we have the sharp needle points. Um, when this is powered up, a voltage 
a good several thousand volts. I'm not 100% sure what the actual voltage is in the end. It's not as simple as, as multiplying it by the number of multiplier stages because um, it, they tend to lose efficiency. As it, the, it, there tends to be a voltage gradient along it. And also, depending on the amount of current flowing out the needles into the air, um, the voltage will tend to sit down in the multiplier. However, um, the charge charges, because the charge is clustered at the tip, the negative um, electrons actually physically detach onto the air molecules. And a charged air molecule is a negative ion. It's, that's what it's referred to as. It's an ion. And because the air is now negatively charged, like charges repel, and it blows away from the needle, so you can actually feel a cold draft in front of the, these needles when it's running. You can also see a very slight, in a very, very, very dark room, a very slight purple corona discharge, just a tiny little purple dot on the end of each needle. And that's, in a sense, it's also created a tiny quantity of ozone. Um, all ionizers like this tend to do it. Uh, some claim they don't, but they do. Um, and it's not of a harmful level. Um, ozone is a bit of one of these um, controversial materials that people say ozone is a dangerous gas or it's a safe gas. It's, it's, it is useful in tiny trace quantities. It's always around us in trace quantities and the amount from a typical ionizer is harmless um, but will have a good effect uh, in um, destroying certain uh, bacterial infestations in the air. Now, talking about bacterial infestations and microbes in the air, the reason an ionizer works is because when it charges the air, the negative charge in the air means that it tends to actually clump onto other non-charged air molecules. Um, and this tends to result in dust and... <sighs> viruses, bacteria, whatever is in the air, um, being charged up and then they will precipitate out the air to any oppositely charged surface. And because these are referenced negative to the mains, the nearest positively charged surface for them to go to is any surface in the room. Um, basically anything that's earth, but even things you wouldn't think are earth, like a, a wooden tabletop, because they are effectively at mains ground potential, they will attract all the the ions and the dirt they're carrying with them and the result is that wh when you've been using an ionizer for a while the area around it just gets all black and sooty looking which a lot of people don't like that but you know you have to say is it better stuck to a surface where you can wipe it off or is it better in your lungs? Now this Ionizer has a sheet of plastic wrapped around the circuit board. I'm not sure why. And I'm not really sure why they do this at all. They've always done it. I'm not sure why. The circuit board is held in by these little plastic washers, which I loosened prior to this, because they were glued in as well. And once you've undone those, the whole lot comes out. And I'll show you the back of the circuit board, just to show it. It's a very repetitive pattern. It's... Um, really simple. I mean, one of the most important things in these is to get a good spacing between these because there is a modestly high voltage and although across each section, across each capacitor, it doesn't exceed about 600 volts, overall from one end to the other it's quite a high voltage. And um, some ionizer designs fold the ionizer around and bring it back in itself and some are really bad because um, what actually happens inside is that any charge at the high voltage end just basically shunts across inside, either by ionization or ultimately by tracking inside. And you see little skid marks on the circuit board where it's progressively tracked across. But this is a very good design. Um, this also explains why after 30 years or so, these are still going strong. And you can still pick these up on eBay. Um, just to look for the, the distinctive case with its um, mountain breeze sort of pattern in the front. And if you can find these on eBay, then I'd say go for them because they're very reliable. And um, you can open them, you can fix them if it ever has that little neon indicator problem, which I'm guessing wasn't, maybe it just affected a batch. I'm not sure if it was an ongoing problem. 
But you'll also find on eBay that these tend to command a high price because they are so good. Um, people with a technical knowledge of these things know that the Mountain Breeze is ultimately one of the best brands. Um, I, I don't know if they're made anymore. I couldn't honestly say. But um, they do still turn up from time to time on eBay. Now, let's see, is there anything else I can really cover here? Um, if you do find them on eBay, they tend to look very grubby and dirty. That's just ionizers. Ionizers are always dirty because uh, their whole operation involves attracting dust and dirt. Now, a note about placing these things. You can place them on a shelf, but don't place them next to earth metalwork because if you do, then it'll just basically be a shortcut to the earth metalwork. If you put this on a radiator, the irons will come out the front and then they'll go straight onto the radiator. If you want the best effect from these things, you're better putting them where there's a decent airflow, even putting a fan next to them so that it blows air past the needles and into the room, and that'll carry the irons a much further distance. Power consumption of these is so low, I mean, it's about a fifth of a watt, it's absolutely negligible. You know, you just it's, it's not even worth trying to work out how much it would cost a year. It's going to be the region of one or two pence or something like that. It really is so low. Um, let's see what else. Uh, doodle, doodle the schematic, uh, just to show you what the circuitry is like in this. It is designed, I have to say, for 230 volts. Now, that's the typical European voltage. Not so practical for... Um, countries with a lower voltage, like 110, 120 volts, because the, ion the multiplier loses efficiency when it's longer. I've only shown three stages here, so that's three pairs of capacitors and diodes. In reality, these ionizers have round about 11 stages and upwards. The capacitors are all 10 nanofarad usually, at 630 volts, and all the diodes tend to be 1N4007s. Is that 1N4007 or IN4007? I can never remember. Uh, anyway, the, the generic 1000 volt 1 amp diode. The 10 mega ohm resistors, the ones that are in the original units, look like half watt carbon film. I'm not sure if they are specifically high voltage or not. Um, the needles, just the sharpest, thinnest stainless steel needles you can find. And really, fundamentally, that's all there is to ionizers. Super simple, but actually really, really effective.